Hello everybody, this is Crypto Bitlaw. Today I just want to do a quick video for you on the latest round of Tether FUD. But before we dive in, I wanted to give the disclaimer that none of this is intended as legal or financial advice. Okay, so we start here. There have been a series of posts on Reddit that give, you know, two sides to this issue regarding Tether creating $1.5 billion worth of USDT out of thin air in the last 24 hours. And you have one side that says none of it is actually backed by cash, and the other side that says it's actually bashed by cash or cash equivalents. So starting with this post, it states that in the last 24 hours, Tether, the creator of USDT, has minted $1.5 billion worth of USDT out of thin air. Nowhere is it documented where the money which was just created comes from and where it actually went. Before 2019, Tether claimed that 100% of its reserves would be backed by actual cash. And suddenly, in April of 2019, Tether claimed that only 74% of Tether would be backed by cash and cash equivalents. A pie chart, which was released by Tether, revealed that only 2.9% would be backed by cash. So it raises the question, how much of it, the Tether, is backed by actual cash? So this particular post cites three different sources to back up their position, one of which is the whale alert transaction detail that states that $1 billion of USDT was minted on the Tron blockchain. Another one of the sources cited by this transaction is the market cap of Tether, which currently sits at about $75.5 billion. And also, it cites to a Financial Times article. Here's a copy of the Financial Times article where it states that Tether says its reserves are backed by the cash to the tune of 2.9%. And that's rather far off from the 100% it used to claim, but it also goes on to say that Tether says it has unrivaled transparency. And to support that claim, Tether issued a pie chart. So if we dig a little bit further, deeper down into this article, here's a copy of the pie chart that Tether explains how its reserves are broken down. And this was issued on March 31st, 2021. Now what's interesting is that you can see that Tether claims that an overwhelming majority of their reserves are backed by commercial paper, which is interesting considering the recent fiasco surrounding Evergrande, that Chinese developer, and their recent default or impending default, which could send shockwaves throughout the financial market. You know, the question arises, how much of Evergrande's commercial paper does Tether actually hold? And if they do, what effect would that have on the crypto markets and just markets in general? I know that Tether has claim before that they don't hold any direct commercial paper issued by Evergrande, but it raises the question, even if they don't hold any commercial paper issued by Evergrande itself, they may hold commercial paper issued by companies or institutions that hold Evergrande commercial paper that would expose Tether to an indirect sort of risk through Evergrande in that commercial paper. It's also worthwhile to note that this article also touches on what's known as the Stable Act, and it states that over the coming months, Tether might find itself facing tougher scrutiny. In December, members of the U.S. Congress presented a legislative proposal for the so-called Stable Act, which would require stable coins like Tether to obtain full banking licenses. And this also contains a quote from a law professor who's been working on the new legislation with Congress, who stated that the idea that stable coins are part of the business and banking and should be regulated as such is something that is increasingly being acknowledged across the spectrum. The growing world of stable coins arguably underpins the entire crypto community right now. If that collapses, the whole space would collapse. So I guess it's safe to say that regulation is bound to come to this industry, particularly focused on stable coin issuers. And it's not really a matter of if, but when, and how broad or narrow the legislation will eventually be. This past weekend, the markets took a significant dip 
and one of the contributing factors was the fact that Evergrande recently issued a statement that they would likely not be able to meet all of their debt obligations. And recently, China, the Chinese government, the CCP, summoned the Evergrande founder to issue statements and do an investigation regarding their financial situation. Now, Tether's parent company is a Chinese-based company known as Bitfinex. And because Tether's reserves consist of a majority of commercial paper, it begs the question, how much exposure does Tether have to this Chinese property developer, Evergrande, that's been at the forefront of a lot of crypto and market-related FUD recently? This article touches on that and states that the founder of the property developer Evergrande was summoned by the government after issuing a statement saying it might not have sufficient funds to meet its financial obligations. It further states that on Friday evening, Evergrande, in a filing with the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, warned that in light of its current liquidity situation, there is, quote, no guarantee that the group will have sufficient funds to continue to perform its financial obligations. As we can see in this article, as we touched on earlier, Tether has previously stated that it does not hold any commercial paper issued by Evergrande. It says, quote, Tether does not hold any commercial paper or other debt or securities issued by Evergrande and has never done so, said a spokesman for Tether. As we have indicated in our published statements and in most recent assurance attestation with the reporting date of June 30th, 2021, the vast majority of commercial paper held by Tether is in A2 and above rated issuers. Now, as a counterpoint to that earlier post about how Tether just created $1.5 billion worth of USDT out of thin air, backed by virtually no cash, there's a counter-narrative going around, as evidenced by this post, that states, no, Tether did not just mint $1.5 billion out of thin air, and then cites to an audit in order to support its position. So this post states that you can like or dislike Tether using low-risk investments to make money off the cash they are holding to back their assets, but saying they are pumping Bitcoin to print more, to buy more Bitcoin is just patently false. And what Tether is doing is generating value for their shareholders through low-risk investments and generating funds they need to pay for operations. And holding cash won't do that. The commercial paper is generally the sticking point for a lot of people, and that's fair as it is an unsecured loan. If those companies go belly up, they will need to fight in court as a creditor to recover funds. The FUD, that most of that was to Evergrande, was just made up. And they have confirmed that they have had no dealings with Evergrande. You can argue they're just lying as they have before. Sure, they could be, but Evergrande is too big to fail in China anyway. They will continue to be bailed out. If you want to honestly discuss the risk of Tether, fine, but don't make up BS that can't be disproven with a Google search. As evidence to support this poster's position, they link to what they describe as an audit of Tether, which is right here, but upon a deeper dive, it turns out that this is actually really an opinion given by an accountant, or what could also be considered an attestation. So this report was prepared by an accounting firm called Moore that's based in the Cayman Islands, but it pretty much tells us a lot of what we already know. Um, basically that Tether holds a, a lion's share of commercial paper in its treasury and then just kind of goes on and does an overview of the rating of the commercial paper without actually really diving deep into what the commercial paper is. And before I wrap this video up, I'd like to draw your attention to this article, which is really interesting from Protos. See right here where it does a deeper dive into who actually is acquiring the majority of the tether that is being issued. And as you can see, um, a lot of it is being acquired by Alameda Research, which is Sam Bankman Freed. He's the CEO of FTX Exchange. His, he is acquiring, or Alameda is acquiring, um, a large portion of this tether. 
in order to operate as a market maker. So I'm not going to go into all the nitty gritty details of how this tether is being you know, funneled through these different entities, but I think it's just really interesting to, I guess, consider that uh, Alameda and FTX, you know, uh, Sam Bankman Freed, it's kind of double dipping on this whole tether thing because they're getting the transaction fees that occur on the exchange with FTX plus also double dipping in the fees that they're getting through the market making services when they're providing liquidity to some of these exchanges. So it's an interesting read to see what's going on. So that's going to wrap up this video for today. I hope everybody enjoyed this content. If you liked what you saw, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. It'll really help us out going forward as we make new content. You can also follow us on Twitter. We're at CryptoBitLaw. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And all of the links uh, mentioned in this video are going to be in the description. I hope everybody enjoyed. Thanks.